It's 3 a.m. when they finish packing the company truck. And at 7 a.m., Worm Boy's ready to get back to work. Wake up, get out of bed. He's got sales to make. James, wake up, man. Oh. Ouch, that CEO babysitter job should come with danger pay. I'm tired, Tom. I want to sleep some more. I really do. <laughs> and so does Caitlin. We don't want to go to work just yet. And when Tom gets to the office, he's more than late. Listen to this. Crap, frankly, is being sent out. The student's sloppy work could be costing him money. So Tom's brought in his managers. Business plans are sent out to investors with upside down pages and missed numbers. So what's a young CEO to do? Make his managers manage. This problem is all on our heads here. Uh, which means that, Rick, you need to do less meetings and be here more. Same thing, Robin, you know, try to maximize your time in Princeton. Uh, but that's something for you to think about and sort out. Later, I heard that the business plans were getting misbounded. Like, Tom like, goes one-on-one on one with the kids. You need to be responsible for everything that goes out to the investors, yeah. and it'll be your head, yeah. right, if it gets messed up. Cool. Does Wormboy think but counting on student right. volunteers was a mistake? There's always that worry. Um, but now I can't think of it because they're here, so <laughs> I can't get rid of them. Time for Tom to quit the babysitting and get to the business of sales. Over the next two months, Worm Boy and Robin go on a sales roadshow, pitching their eco-friendly plant food to key big box stores. When it comes to one last pitch at America's biggest shopping channel, QVC, Worm Boy's worried. QVC is incredibly important. We've met with seven retailers between the U.S. and Canada, like big ones. We haven't heard any yeses back so far. Tom's desperate for a deal to impress his investors. Are your joints all sore from shoveling the snow? The QVC really channel right reaches 86 million American homes. <laughs> and Tom's pitching a new product, an experimental plant jelly, and a better price. I think we can in the meeting go down by 20 cents on everything. But that's it. It's great. I mean, this is something that'll help us validate you know, our sales effort. Cheers. Cheers. Investors <laughs> should be happy about that. But get this. That new plant jelly Tom just sold? It might not work at all. Yep, we'll the plant it, jelly's we'll never it. been tested. See, see you, you can put this out, but do you have anything that makes any difference? You know? TerraCycle's chief scientist thinks Tom's gone too far. I'm going out and selling this jelly thing when you don't have any idea what you're talking about. Bill Gillum has three PhDs. Worm Boy's a dropout, but he's got a gut feeling that the worm poop jelly will work. That means sell first, test later. It's going to cause a lot of stress, but that's what it's about. That's the reality of building a small business to go through that stress, or everyone would be doing it, and it would be easy. It's, it's not easy. Will the jelly test put more proof in the poop? Can the Worm Boy's eco-capitalism sell in a big box world? We haven't heard a yes back from any of the big stores yet. And will his friends come through? Get the f***ing clients. Or leave him squirming on a hook? We can make it or break it on this. All that and more after the break. <laughs> Young Tom Saki shocked his parents, gave up the good life he had at Princeton, and became Worm Boy. What we're trying to do is flip capitalism on its head. He's deep into the business of worm poop. They're producing incredible worm poop, and that's what we sell. But is the poop about to hit the fan? On Monday, you can actually start attacking these guys. So After weeks sort of, of struggling to manage a volunteer workforce and make sales, <laughs> Worm Boy finally gets good news. Tests prove that the plant jelly he sold to the QVC channel does work. A few days later, he's betting his future on another risky move. Get production together. Yeah. Get all the bottling in here. He can't bottle enough product back at the greenhouse, so Tom wants to turn this old Trenton warehouse into a factory. The total cost $300,000. Here's how he sold that to his backers. We're buying this building because we need to be able to fulfill the orders that a big box store could give us. And here's the reality. The problem is, is that they haven't given us an order yet. And we've only got a couple of months for them to do so or this thing is going to sink us. But there's a more immediate problem. Tom's high school buddy Alex and that lawn care program. <laughs> this kind of thing isn't cool. 
when it's a client's pool. The problem is he's running it like a high school lawn care company, not like a big business like we need it to be run. Sure, Alex did good bringing back Princeton's grass, but he hasn't brought in many new clients. 30, 35 is the goal. Okay, right. We're at about 20 now. So. Tom's counting on Alex for a lot more. But to get it up to like 200, say, that's almost a client a day. Right. All right. So what is your, like, how are you going to do that? So he puts on the pressure. Get the f***ing clients. Go out and get clients. Mm -hmm. With Wormboy's expectations, does his business really have room for his friends? So it's a good question whether Al's the right person to be running this. He's a good friend. I don't know if he can pull it off. The friends question is about to get more complicated. Remember his pal Robin, the sales VP? He's been trying to make a sale to Home Depot, but is baffled by one of their forms. Do you know what like the normal thing to do there is? You know, I honestly don't. Robin doesn't actually have any experience with big box stores, and that's putting the squeeze on Worm Boy. The issue here is, is that Robin's one of my best friends, and all the existing investors are saying, well, why is he your head of sales? Why don't you fire him and bring someone else on? You can't just say, well, okay, thanks a lot for the past two years of sleeping on the floor and getting this company built, but now you're not the right guy for the job, so take a hike and I'll find a new sales guy. Tom will stand by Robin, even as TerraCycle's bank account falls. Two months later, they're in Toronto and they're desperate because they barely have enough money left to cover next month's expenses. Which is potential, right? I mean, we've been selling potential for a while and we'd have to start selling reality very soon and that it's just not there yet. Them into Somehow, though, solutions. in front of these big-time venture capitalists, Wormboy and Robin so, suddenly remember you know, how to look on the bright side. Colors. It's the first product in the world to ever be packaged um, and made out of garbage. It doesn't just say eco-friendly on the bottle, it streams eco-friendly. While bringing it at a lower price point, we still retain higher margins than the competitors, and that's because every aspect is garbage. We're also speaking with uh, Canadian Tire here in Canada, Loblaws here in Canada. With Home Depot, we're, you know, we're well on our way. We uh, had a meeting with Walmart about a month ago. And then comes the ask, and it's a big in. one. And with another million brought in, what we can do is then outfit the factory and be able to get up for sales and then close the balance before the year ends. The millions just for right now. Tom's asking for 4.5 million in all. That's enough to keep TerraCycle going for three more years. It's also... It's, uh, it's going to be stretching. The amount that you're asking for is, uh, I guess at this point, aggressive. Maybe too aggressive for these guys, who are most intrigued by something about Worm Boy, not Worm Poo. The other thing I wanted to ask you, Tom, no disrespect, but um, how old are you? Uh, 22. Good for you. It's been extremely well. <laughs> extremely well at 22. That's um, how it sounds to be let down easy. Back in Princeton, it's fall term. We find Tom working hard, helping Alex with lawns because the student workers are all back in school. But just when it seems like he's dug himself into quite a hole, there's a call from Toronto. Well, you know, we just got out of Walmart a couple minutes ago. Robin's got a deal. Walmart Canada wants a $300,000 order for the spring. <laughs> That's so incredible. Wow. Shit. I don't even know what to say. Hey, now we got to make the stuff, man. Yeah. Making the stuff means getting that new factory set up in a hurry. These Dasani boxes, we just invert them. And, and trying so to win over another big investor. Product. Walmart, for example, uh, will probably be ordering half a pallet of store. Good Here's thing Worm Boy works well under pressure. So they're in there and they're working away. And the worms Actually never let them down. So they're very small, but they do eat their body weight every day. <laughs> Maybe quitting Princeton wasn't such a bad idea after all. I would trade 10 degrees for this opportunity. Today, Worm Boy's beaten time and money. Just look, there's his big Walmart order ready for shipping. Hey, Carlos, what's up? But is turning garbage into gold really enough to flip capitalism on its head? There's still a lot to be done. In two to three years, I can tell you whether we've proven eco-capitalism or not. Happy birthday! Fair enough. After all, worm boy Tom Sackey right, cheers. Cheers. just turned 23. <laughs>